Well, well, welcome to the final installment of our proficiency review for algebra and functions. This is the fifth uh, in a series. We're going to talk a little bit about factoring today and a little bit about sequences today. And again, as I go through this, uh, if, I, if I'm going too quickly, you know, just go back, watch it again, uh, kind of the old-fashioned rewind, and then uh, make sure that you understand what's going on. Uh, you should be taking notes on things that um, you, know, you have some concerns with or that you feel like you need a little reinforcement because watching the video will help some. But if you don't take notes, if you're not really paying close attention, it's not going to help near as much as it should. Um, the t first topic is on factoring. Uh, I know that when I teach factoring in algebra, uh, you know, it can take a week or more to go through it properly in a traditional classroom setting. So what I'm going to do is just kind of highlight it best that I can. And we're going to look at factoring in two different ways. We're going to look at factoring as uh, using the distributive property in reverse and also using FOIL, first outer and last, when you multiply binomials in reverse. Now, the first couple of problems are straightforward factoring problems. This one says factor 3x squared minus 6x plus 3. The first thing that you should look for when you try to factor something is to see if it has a greatest common factor. And this is where you're using the distributive property in reverse. I can see 3 divides into all 3 terms. This is going to be 3 times, and this is instead of multiplying through by 3, I'm factoring or dividing it out of each term. And what remains is x squared minus 2x plus 1, but the 3 remains as part of the problem. So that tells me right away it's not going to be either answer A or B because they don't have a factor of 3. But both of these have factors of 3. So now I have to see what gives me this. Well, here's where you can kind of work backward. You could do FOIL. You could multiply those together, or you could square this. First, x squared, outer, plus x, inner, minus x, last minus 1. These are going to cancel. I'm going to get x squared minus 1. That is not what I have here. So I know right away that it can't be answer C. And if I was to take x minus 1 times x minus 1 and do FOIL, x squared minus x minus x plus 1 minus 2x there, I'm going to get right back to where I started. So it's got to be answer D. I don't expect you to, if you're not been good at FOIL at this point, to all of a sudden become extraordinary at, at doing the uh, factoring process and such, but if you just do a little bit of the basics and use the idea of FOIL, you can get yourself through these problems. Same thing here. I don't know if I would bother trying to factor that straightforward like. I might take each one of these answers, apply FOIL, and see if I get the original problem. x squared plus 4x minus 6x minus 24. Well, a plus 4 and a minus 6 is not going to give me the minus 10 in the middle. Can't be that. x squared plus 6x minus 4x minus 24. Again, I'm not going to get the middle term. I'm going to get a plus 2x here, a positive 6 and a negative 4. So I can't do that one. x squared plus 12x minus 2x minus 24. Now here I have a plus 12x and a minus 2x, that's a plus 10x. I need a minus 10x. I'm really close. All I have to do is have these two signs switched around, and that's what I have here in answer D. Okay? Now, if you want to go ahead and do FOIL just to play it safe, that would completely understand it. This last example here is a little bit tricky because it uses factoring, but in not as direct way as these first two examples. It says Fiona is designing a skateboard park. <clears throat> One skating area in the park will be shaped like a parabola, which is kind of a U-shape. That's this part right here. Okay? That is described by this equation. It's kind of a weird-looking equation. It's an equation with two variables, and it's quadratic. It says, what is the distance across the top of the skating area? Here's the person with the skateboard ready to skate down this ramp here. here and I've got right here a distance across. That's what I want. So if I knew what this number was right here, and if I knew what this number was right here, I could take the difference of the two. Well, that's when your y value is zero. So when your y value is zero, that's when this expression has to equal zero. Well, that can't be zero. That's one six. One six times something equals zero. 
means that this would have to be zero. And this is where the factoring comes in. I have to find out what values make this equal to zero. And I can't just sit around all day plugging in numbers. So I would have to kind of reverse the FOIL process. I'm going to need an x and an x to get the x squared. And I'm going to need two numbers who have a product of 45, but also have a sum of negative 18. Now, there's not a lot of numbers that give you a 45 there. 45 could be uh, 9 times 5. It could be 45 times 1, but more importantly, it could be 15 times 3. I need a negative 18, so I need a minus 3 and a minus 15. Now, do FOIL. Check. x squared minus 15x minus 3x negative times negative plus 45. That's the one that gives it. So I can see what makes this equal to 0. This is equal to 0 when either x minus 3 is 0 or x minus 5 is 0. That's getting a little messy here. Let me go ahead and clear out part of this up here. So what I have is I have x minus 3 times x minus 15 equal to 0. Well, that means either x minus 3 is 0 or x minus 15 is 0. Add 3 to both sides. Add 15 to both sides. This number here is 3. This number here is 15. The distance across is their difference. 15 minus 3 is 12. Answer A. Now, in this case, that's a lot of work. And that's some Algebra 1, maybe even closer to Algebra 2 work there. You get a problem like this, and you're really not sure the best thing that you could do is just kind of play around with it and take an educated guess best that you can. This is a tough problem unless you know these key steps here. All right, let's consider sequences. Um, a real easy definition of a sequence is a set of numbers in a specific order. So in these types of problems, <clears throat> we're going to be finding typically either the next term in the sequence or the next couple of terms. We might be finding the general term or the nth term. And we might even be using that uh, as because of repeating decimals to find a particular value in a specific spot on a repeating decimal. So we'll try some examples here. It says that the first five terms of a sequence are given below. 1, 3, 9, 27, 81. Now the thing that I notice about these numbers is that this is 3 times 1, right? This is just 3. This is 3 times 3. This is 3 times 3 times 3. And this is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. They have to do with powers of 3. It says the sequence continues. Which expression represents the nth term of the sequence? Now the nth term is the general term. That's why the n is in all the choices here. And because it has to do with powers of 3, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be b or it's not going to be c. But maybe the easiest way to think of this is let the fact that this is your first term, this is your second term, this is your third term of your sequence, this is your fourth term of your sequence, this is your fifth term of your sequence. So if I plug in 1, I should get 1. If I plug in 2, I should get 3. If I plug in 3, I should get 9. If I plug in 4, I should get 27. So I could start with one of the first one, but I think I'll just take this 427. If I plug in 4, I better get 27. So let me go to each of the answers. If I plug a 4 in there, I get 3 to the 4 minus 1, which is 3 to the 3rd, which is 27. That's a good sign. I'm going to keep that one in mind. Now just to kind of reinforce that I don't think it's either one of these, let's plug a 4 in here. 3 times 4 minus 2, that's 12 minus 2, which is 10. No, that's not 27. Definitely not right. If I plug a 4 in here, this is 3 times 4, which is 12. That's not 27, right? Clearly, that's not it. The only other one I thought maybe might be this one. So if I plug a 4 in here, I would get 3 to the 4th, which is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, which is 81. So that one doesn't work either. So my first choice was the correct one. It's answer A, 3 to the n minus 1. I got that by making sure that I recognized that each term that was written down, which one was my first term, which one was my second term, which was my third term, this is when n equals 1, this is when n equals 2, this is when n equals 3, this is when n equals 4, this is when n equals 5. That's a really good way to remember how to do a problem like this, is to set it up this way. Take the time to write this information in. Next example, it says the sequence is defined as follows. The nth term is 3 more than, that means we're adding, twice the square of n. 3 more than means I'm adding 3 to twice the square of n. Or I could write this just as 2n squared plus 3. By translating the words 
into symbols here, I have the nth term. It says, what's the seventh term of the sequence? Well, what happens when I plug a 7 in here? In for n, because it's the seventh term. It's when n is 7. So I'm going to have 2 times 7 squared plus 3. Now, you do the exponent first, your order of operations. So that's 2 times 49 plus 3. 2 times 49 is 98 plus 3, which is 101. And that's answer C. Okay, the next problem says that the first four terms of the sequence are shown below. There are 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth, 1 thirty second. Now again, before I even get to the rest of the problem, I notice a pattern. The numerators are all 1 and the denominators are getting bigger by a factor of 2. 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 8 is 16, 2 times 16 is 32. It says the sequence continues. What is the seventh term of the sequence? Well, I'm not going to try to come up with some fancy formula. I have 4, I'm going to find the 5th, the 6th, and the 7th terms. So if I multiply by 2, my 5th term will be 2 times 32 is 64. That's the 5th term. The 6th term, I multiply this by 2, I get 1 over 128. I multiply by 2, my 7th term is 1, 2 times 128 is 256, and that matches my answer, answer A. Yeah, I didn't have to go very far, I only needed to go to the 7th term, even if I needed to go to the 17th term. This is one way that you can go ahead and go about to do it, although multiplying by 2 that many times, I would have gotten a huge denominator. But the idea is that if they want the, you know, the next term or three or four terms down the row, just continue the pattern. This one here is more of an identification problem. This is a little bit tricky. It says that the first five terms of the sequence are shown below. And they are 4, 10, uh, 18, um, 82, and 243. You know, I started looking at this problem and I'm thinking, okay, I don't really see a, a, a great pattern other than the numbers are all even. This got bigger by 6, this got bigger by 18, this got bigger by, what would that be, uh, 54. So, I mean, I, I can see some patterns here, but I didn't see anything right off the bat. It says the sequence continues, what's the sixth term? So I only need the next term. And I looked at this, and the reason I said that this is tricky is because I recognize that this was 1 more than 3, so this is 3 plus 1. I recognize that this is 1 more than 10, or excuse me, 1 more than 9. 10 is 1 more than 9. So this would be 9 plus 1, but 9 is 3 squared plus 1. I recognize that this is 1 more than 27. 27 is 3 times 3 times 3, so it's 3 to the 3rd plus 1. This turns out to be 3 to the 4th plus 1. This turns out to be 3 to the 5th plus 1. So the next one has to be 3 to the 6 plus 1. Now 3 to the 6 is 3 times 3 times 3, 27 times 3, 81 times 3, 243 times 3, 729 plus 1, or 730, and I hope that that's a choice, and it is. Now, all that aside, you can see that the numbers are increasing, and they're getting bigger by pretty big amounts. So really, these next two are questionable. Even if you weren't sure, you could get it probably down to an educated guess. The, re <clears throat> the reason I say these are questionable is because they're bigger than that, but you can see how much of a jump that is. That almost, that's like almost a triple. So if this almost triples again, you're looking at you know, three times that amount or in the 700s. These two are just too small. It has to be one of these. So if nothing else, you could get it down to a 50-50 you know, guess. Next one up, it says, in the repeating decimal, 0 0.384615, and you can see the 384615 has the little bar above it, or the vinculum above it, that tells you that it goes on forever. 384615, 384615, 384615, forever and ever and ever. What is the digit in the 40th place? Now here again, there's no need to figure out this all in your head. You could work this one out. I might actually need a little bit more room than that. You could work this out by actually taking it out so that you have 40 terms. So if I go 0 0.384615 and continue that, and I'm going to continue it down here. And I think probably I got pretty close to enough. Then I just count the 40th place. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10. 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 12, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. There it is. I actually took it out further than I needed to. And my answer is B. Now, there's other ways to look at this. You have a repetition of 6. And 6 and 6 and 6 and 6 and 6 and 6 would give me 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. And I would get to the sixth one. My last choice here, or my last example here, says <clears throat> which equation describes the pattern in the table. I did one like this earlier. I'm going to take one of the x values and I'm going to plug it in to find if I match a y. Now, I'm not going to take the first one or the last one. I usually take one in the middle. I'm going to take this one. I'm not going to take the one dead center. I'm going to plug 4 in for x, and I'm going to see how I get y of 19. I'm just going to plug it into each one of these choices. 3 times 4 is 12, minus 4, no, that's 8, that's not enough. 3 times 4, 12, plus 4 is 16, not enough. Three, uh, let's see, 4 times 4 is 16, minus 3 is 13, not enough. 4 times 4 is 16, plus 3 is 19, and there's my answer. Now, I knew it was going to be one of the bottom two because I could see that it was increasing by 4 each time. So that meant that I had to have a factor of 4, that my variable had to be multiplied by 4. And these were the only two that had that. But I was able to find it specifically by just taking one of the values somewhere in the middle. If you take the first one or the last one, a lot of times two of them will work. And this way, maybe you can save yourself some time. Just take one. Now, if I had two of them work, then I would have taken maybe 2 and 11 or 3 and 15 and plugged it into the two that had worked for the first one to see which one works for the second. All right, now, lots of practice comes in uh, for these problems. www.succeedinmath.com, uh, worksheets from your, um, uh, your math teacher, practice test, and just make sure that you go over this until you have a good understanding of it or you have a better feel for it. And remember, 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 practice, practice, practice.